and welcome to the program Upon This Rock. I'm Jan Marie, your host. Upon This Rock is a program and a ministry designed to showcase various apostolates or outreaches that are doing a wonderful work here in our local community, nationally and throughout the world. And today we have a very special presentation, the Maronite Trilogy, The Glory of Lebanon, which will consist of three programs. Our first program was on St. Maron and the Maronite Rite. Our second program was on the Maronite Saints, and this, the last in the series, is on contemplative prayer in the lives of the Maronite Saints. And we have a very special guest, Father Nabil Moanes. Father Moanes is a Maronite Catholic priest originally from Lebanon. He was ordained in 1984. He holds a doctorate in religious philosophy from the University of Paris Sorbonne in France. He is the pastor of St. Ephraim Maronite Catholic Church in San Diego, California. Father Moanes is also an author who has written several books and numerous articles in English and French. He is fluent in Arabic, French, and English. Welcome back to the program, Father Moanes. It's great to have you here once again. Thank you, Jean Marie. I am very happy to be with you in this program and especially to share with you the joy, your mission, and uh, the grace and the gift to the Lord through your uh, program. Thank you, Father. And before we get into our topic on contemplative prayer in the lives of the Maronite Saints, for the sake of our viewers who may have missed programs one and two, how would you describe your main mission? My main mission is to build a community of prayers, as I have done it in St. Ephraim, and also in another community of prayer in Las Vegas, under the grace of St. Charbel and his inspiration and another community of prayers in Denver under the inspiration and the grace of St. Ravka. And also by his uh, also gift, by a gift from the Lord, uh, the Lord uh, granted me to be the servant of, uh, of his uh, servant, the, land, ma the handmaid of the Lord, uh, the Virgin Mary, Mary Mother of Life, to build for her a shrine in San Diego to be a sign of prayer, a sign of uh, glory, a sign of meditation and uh, adoration of his word, of his uh, life, and a presence, of his presence between us. That's beautiful, Father. So tremendous what the Lord's doing for you there in San Diego, California. Now this program is on contemplative prayer in the lives of the Maronite Saints. For the sake of our viewers who may not be familiar with contemplative prayer, how would you define that for us? Yeah, I'd like to uh, give a uh, very, uh, a little bit very detailed uh, definition of the contemplative prayer. First, it is a yes to the, a yes to the Lord, a yes to God the Father. Second, it is a very simple action to call him Abba. It means Daddy. And third, also to uh, be one with him in a very simple uh, way also to unite our heart to his heart. And uh, fourth is to, uh, to come and enter into his life and uh, to, uh, to be with him, to be with the, all the saints. We call it in our language the communion of saints. To enter in the holiness, to enter in the glory of God. And uh, that's a very... Uh, very simple way to uh, give you a definition about the contemplative prayer but also i can say it in the word of the bible come and see and taste the goodness of the lord that's what we can uh, in in some way uh, it is an invitation to us to be with him be with the lord that's beautiful father and we know we have many Catholic, Roman Catholic doctors of the church such as St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross that also give in-depth definitions in their writings. But we're focusing on the Maronite saints today. 
And being that we're talking about contemplative prayer, is that something that we're all called to? Yes, it is a very special uh, call for everyone because first, Jesus by himself, he practiced the contemplative prayer. Mary, she was the first to be a, also uh, to live this gift from the Lord. And as you have uh, said, I, I'd like to make also this little uh, uh, clarification. Yes, St. Teresa and St. John of the Cross, they had a very wonderful gift to explain, to write with what they lived with the Lord. They explained how they lived the contemplative life. St. Charbel and uh, St. Uh, Rafka and St. Hardini, because of the situation of the war, of the persecutions, and of the tribulation of their times, they only lived what the, what the Lord gave us, uh, gave them to live. They practice. They, uh, it's like uh, they uh, gave their life as an example, as a way, through the way and the life and the truth that Jesus gave, us, uh, gave it to us to live the contemplative life. How did St. Charbel practice the contemplative life? Yeah, St. Charbel, uh, because uh, also, I don't know, I'd like to say you, he lived around uh, 1828 and uh, he died 1898. In his life, he practiced it in a very, also very modest way, a humble way, but it's like a poesy, like a poetry. He, uh, uh, when he was a little boy, he practiced it at home, before eating, before go to sleep, by turning his heart with his family to adore God, to contemplate his words. And also he lived it after, even in the nature, when, uh, because he was a shepherd, uh, he used to go in the nature, and uh, there he used to sit on a rock, uh, on the top of a hill, and meditate, and put his uh, mind, put his soul in, uh, in the motion with the presence of the Lord. And he lived out also in a very special way, in the nature too, he created a little temple to Mary in a little uh, cave, and there he was lighting a candle. That's a form, that's a one of the form of uh, also contemplative life. You can light a candle, you sit in front of the, of the candle, and you look, you let yourself be touched by the presence of the Lord, by the grace of Mary by the communion with the saints. And we have a blessed candle right here on the set in front of his picture, the picture of St. Charbel. And I had a privilege, we're going to go to a clip in a mi minute, to pray before his beautiful image at Our Lady of Mount Lebanon, St. Peter Cathedral. And the Lord gave me a tremendous meditation. And we're going to share that right now with our viewers. I hope as they watch this clip, they will be touched and enter into a deeper spirit of contemplative prayer through his intercession. Let's take a look at that clip. We're here at Our Lady of Mount Lebanon, St. Peter Cathedral in Los Angeles, California. It was here during the octave of the Feast of St. Charbel, but I asked our Lord, how might St. Charbel have prepared before his reception of the Holy Eucharist, and how he might have given thanks afterwards? The following meditation, which we share with you now, is a fruit of that inspiration. I invite you to place yourself in the presence of Jesus Christ and enter into this meditation. I pray that you will be blessed by the holy images. Let us begin with humble adoration of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. After the example of Saint Charbel, we can place ourselves in spirit before his Eucharistic presence even now. We place ourselves in the presence of Jesus Christ. Become aware of your own unworthiness and his infinite humility and condescension. Let us continue by meditating on the generosity of God, the generosity of his presence in the Holy Eucharist, his infinite humility, the attributes of his divine condescension, that is, God becoming bread and the miracle of transubstantiation. This thought alone can cause one to go into spiritual ecstasy, as in the life of Saint Charbel. Then, as we transition to the thanksgiving phase, 
after we have received our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, recall that one of the titles for St. Charbel in his litany is Precious Fragrance Filling the World. You too are called to be a precious fragrance. Let your thanksgiving be the fragrance of your life. Ask God, what graces do you have for me today from the Eucharist? Perhaps he will remind you of the grace of his indwelling presence, the awareness of his Trinitarian indwelling. Then once receiving him, ask him for the graces that he would like to give you from and through his holy hands. Pause and listen to which graces he desires to give you and how you might apply them with his grace. Continuing the thanksgiving phase with all of your heart and with intense desire, thank him for his infinite mercy and his condescension in coming to you, his unworthy servant. Pause and enter into that moment. How might I thank you, Lord, for the gift of your presence? Amen. That was a beautiful meditation, wasn't it, Father? It was really a, uh, a union. It was really a beauty. We can see the glory of God. And in the light of that, we learned on our previous program that St. Charbel would spend half the day in preparation for the Holy Eucharist for his Mass and the other half in Thanksgiving. How can we as lay people enter more deeply into a spirit of preparation and Thanksgiving? Yeah, it's like in uh, the way of St. Charbel, uh, simply come uh, to come before uh, the Mass and uh, sit there. Uh, no matter, uh, uh, we don't need a lot of time, perhaps five minutes, perhaps one minute but come before the Mass, one minute, sit and open uh, your eyes. Look at the tabernacle, look at the light, look at the icons, and let uh, the supernatural, let the divine vibration uh, come into your life. And like this, after when the Eucharist is there, as Saint Charbel, you will uh, explore, you can experience how God is touching your life and how your life is going to be changed, converted, and how you're going to enjoy, to rejoice with the Lord through the communion, through the unity uh, given, it, uh, given to us from years and years by the Eucharist. And uh, Saint Charbet uh, has a very, very deep life with the Eucharist, as you said, because he divided his life between before the Eucharist, during the Eucharist, and after the Eucharist. I think that's what made it so much more effective for him because the inspiration that came to me was it wasn't just some of us who are daily communicants, including myself, we can get so used to going to Mass and receiving our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity, but we have to stop and say, what grace, Lord, will you give to me today if we want to overcome a certain fault or if we want to practice a certain virtue? I think that meditation, like you said, one minute, five minutes, it makes it that more efficacious so we don't become habitual. We don't become so familiar with our Lord that we forget really what we're receiving and the awesomeness, the tremendous awesomeness of God himself that we're taking into our own bodies. Now on to St. Rothka. She was that beautiful Lebanese Maronite nun and victim soul. Share with us how she may have entered in contemplative prayer in her life, contemplative prayer. Yes, uh, St. Rothka, as you know, so she lived uh, around 1832 and she died uh, around 1914. And uh, also she entered this uh, life of con uh, contemplation uh, through an active life. She started first by being active in the ministry, by being also like a missionary for the Immaculate Conception uh, of Mary. And uh, after this period of uh, tribulation and persecution, she lived it in the Middle East and in Lebanon. She, the Lord, called her to enter in, in a monastery where they, 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 they were called contemplative uh, sisters and in the Maronite uh, order. And there, our special, uh, the special unity she has, the first special unity and the strong unity with the Lord, 
that when she asked the Lord to suffer with him, one of the contemplative life we can uh, live also is to accept sometimes some suffering, some sickness, and uh, also to offer them to the Lord. And what it is beautiful in the contemplative life of uh, uh, Saint Rafka, when she lost everything, her health, her even sight, her body, through, the, through her suffering, she asked the Lord, sh she was talking always with the Lord. She was in union with him, and one day she asked him a gift, a beautiful gift, to open her eyes again and to see her sisters. Through, it's like a, uh, uh, it's like a perseverance, perseverance in the unity with the Lord, in the unity with the, her community, in the unity with the Word, and that's the light came back to her eyes, and that the light uh, allow her to see again the beauty, to contemplate the beauty of uh, uh, the faces of her sisters, to contemplate the beauty of God in the faces of the people that are around her. I recall it was her superior had said, if this is really God's will, uh, Sister Rafka, that you are to be blind like this, ask the Lord to give us a sign to let you to see me for a brief moment under holy obedience. And so under holy obedience, which our Lord tremendously honors the vow of obedience of religious, he allowed her to see again only for a moment. She saw the faces of her religious superior and her sisters, and then she went back to being blind because this was her offering to God of her whole body, an oblation that she made of her life. And we're going to say the prayer to her right now, and I hope you'll see the image of her on the screen or behind myself because this is the prayer card that we're going to give to you viewers. We're halfway through our show, and we're going to give you a prayer card of St. Rafka, St. Hardini, and St. Shrabel just for writing, and we're happy to send that to you. We have it in three languages, Spanish, Arabic and English. So just indicate which one you want, and we'd be happy to give that to you. But let's say the prayer, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we say this prayer, we're praying it for our viewers to receive the gift of contemplative prayer, that God will bless them with the gift of contemplative prayer. O oh, Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, you imprinted your salvation image in the life of Saint Rafka, and made her teacher and worker, praying and sharing with you the mystery of redemption. We humble ourselves before you with her prayers and intercession so that you bless the children, enlighten the youth, and transform the fatigue of the people into seasons of grace and good, and give the sick and those in pain the graces of healing, joy, and happiness, and to grant those who pray for you in the churches and monasteries what they ask for. And like you, Grace Rafka, to see your celestial lights, allow us to live like her in the faith and hope and love throughout all our lives, so we will glorify you and thank you with her and with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints till the end of time. Amen. So we pray that for our viewers, and we hope that our Lord will answer that prayer to bring them more deeply into contemplative prayer. And that brings us to the last saint that we're talking about today, Saint Mumtala Hardini. How did he enter into contemplative prayer, Father? Uh, bless, uh, Saint Hardini also, he has a very intensive uh, life of prayer, uh, but I'd like to stop only on one example because it is very good for all, uh, for all of us uh, and for those that are active in uh, their life and because also it reveals what Saint Paul said in the Bible, whatever you do, you do it for the glory of God. And uh, Habdini, he refused to go and to be hermit. It means to consecrate all his life uh, in silence and all his life in uh, meditation or adoration uh, to the Lord. No, he said, I am going to be active in the Word, but also at the same time, I am going to live this uh, precious, this uh, treasure of, uh, of the uh, religious life is the contemplative life. And how he have done it, he lived it also in a very, very simple way, the way of St. Sherbel, to prepare himself to the Eucharist and to have also some hours of adoration. And that the, uh, the example I'm going to give to everybody, he used to have a, an icon of the Virgin Mary. Every time he used to enter his room, he used to tell her, Hail Mary. Every time he, uh, before he goes out from his room, he used to, hel to tell her, Hail Mary. And uh, 
And that's why also I, I'd like to mention it at the end of his life, at the last moment, at the last, uh, at the last second of his life, he asked that picture from his uh, brothers and he, with an adoration, with a contemplation, his, his eyes contemplated for the last moment in his life the face of the Virgin Mary and Jesus before he gave his soul to them. That's so beautiful. I recall the words where he surrendered his soul through the pure hands of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. He was truly a monk enraptured by the Eucharist, as our Holy Father said at his canonization. But I want us to go to our next clip. It's going to be a prayer to the Trinity by Blessed Elizabeth of Trinity. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the Trinitary aspects of the Maronite liturgy. So let's go ahead and take a look at that clip on Blessed Elizabeth. We share with you now the prayer of Blessed Elizabeth of the Trinity to the Most Holy Trinity. And I felt it appropriate to share this with you during the Maronite Trilogy, The Glory of Lebanon, being that the Maronite Liturgy is very Trinitarian in its character. And now a little bit about Blessed Elizabeth. Blessed Elizabeth of the Trinity was a cloistered Carmelite nun. She was born in 1880 in the Diocese of Bourges. In 1901, she entered the Discalc Carmelite Monastery in Dijon. There she made her profession of vows in 1903, and from there she was called to light, to love, and to life by her divine spouse in 1906. She was a faithful adorer in spirit and in truth. Her life was a praise of the glory of the Most Holy Trinity. Present in her soul, amidst interior darkness and excruciating suffering, in the mystery of divine inhabitation, she found her heaven on earth, her special charism and her mission for the church. And I invite you now to enter into this prayer to the Most Holy Trinity. Prayer of Blessed Elizabeth of the Trinity to the Most Holy Trinity. O oh my God, Trinity whom I adore, help me to forget myself entirely that I may be established in you as still and as peaceful as if my soul were already in eternity. May nothing trouble my peace or make me leave you, O oh my unchanging one. But may each minute carry me further into the depths of your mystery. Give peace to my soul. Make it your heaven your beloved dwelling and your resting place. May I never leave you there alone, but be wholly present, my faith wholly vigilant, wholly adoring, and wholly surrendered to your creative action. O oh, my beloved Christ, crucified by love, I wish to be a bride for your heart. I wish to cover you with glory. I wish to love you even unto death. But I feel my weakness, and I ask you to clothe me with yourself, to identify my soul with all the movements of your soul, to overwhelm me, to possess me, to substitute yourself for me, that my life may be but a radiance of your life. Come into me as a door, as restorer, as savior. O oh, eternal word, word of my God, I want to spend my life in listening to you, to become wholly teachable, that I may learn all from you. Then through all nights, all voids, all helplessness, I want to gaze on you always and remain in your great light. O oh, my beloved star, so fascinate me that I may not withdraw from your radiance. O oh, consuming fire, spirit of love, come upon me and create in my soul a kind of incarnation of the word, that I may be another humanity for him in which he can renew his whole mystery. And you, O oh Father, bend lovingly over your poor little creature, cover her with your shadow, seeing in her only the beloved in whom you are well pleased. O oh, my three, my all, 
my beatitude, infinite solitude in which I lose myself. I surrender myself to you as prey. Bury yourself in me, that I may bury myself in you until I depart to contemplate in your light the abyss of your greatness. Well, Father, I hope that our viewers enjoyed that clip, and could you briefly share with us what are the Trinitarian aspects that are in the Maronite liturgy? Yeah, we have a very relation, very big relationship with the Trinity in our liturgy, and we, that's why we call it the Divine Liturgy. It is uh, first, uh, ev every time we start uh, the Liturgy of the Word, we start it by the glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and it is from the Bible too. And uh, second, we have in the middle, be, in the middle of our liturgy, we have the Kadishat Aloho, Kadishat Hailton, or Kadishat Lomoyuto. It is the, the, the Trisagion, and it is also the same word, Holy are you, O God, Holy are you, O Immortal One, Holy are you, O Powerful One. They are the same word that they were revealed to, uh, through the Divine Mercy to Sister Faustina. That's beautiful, Father. I know there's so many blessings, at least seven or eight, that I could figure out that are in the Mass itself, beautiful blessings even for the indwelling presence of the Trinity to come upon us. But we only have a couple minutes left, and I want you to point out for our viewers how you got to find out about Blessed Elizabeth and a tremendous miracle that happened to a bishop friend of yours. Yes, uh, he was the a cardinal, uh, the, card the Archbishop of uh, Lyon, uh, de Courtrai, and he was uh, very sick uh, from his uh, throat. He has a cancer in his throat. And uh, one day he was invited by the Carmelite sisters in, uh, uh, in the monastery of uh, Sister Elizabeth of the Trinity. And uh, that's why he went there and he knelt on her tomb and uh, the day after he was healed, completely healed. That's tremendous. Well, I'd like to invite our viewers to get your pen and paper ready because we have a free gift for you, the prayer cards of St. Charbel, St. Rafka, and St. Hardini, just for writing the program. And thank you, Father Nabil Moanis, all the way from San Diego, California, for being on the program with us. Thank you for our viewers for joining us as well. Father, could you give us a Trinitarian blessing as we conclude yeah, our program? Yeah, that is uh, from our Divine Liturgy. May God the Father bless you, and the grace of the only Son be upon you, and the unity and adorning of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's so beautiful, Father. Wonderful. And on a final note, we took some of these references from The Eternal Mystic by Father Joseph Glynn, and he mentions how even saying the rosary, as St. Rafka did, can bring you into contemplative prayer. So if you want to have more information, you can always check out the mystics of the Catholic Church, especially the Carmelite mystics. Thank you for joining us, and may our Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.